Now, an isobaric process is where you have a constant pressure. And so in this case, let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have constant pressure here. Um, you know, but in, in this case, the volume is increasing, right? So from here to here, uh, the volume is increasing. Pressure is uh, staying the same. And so we have that, that relationship there. So if we had that, right, um, we would be going from a cooler temperature to a hotter temperature. And that's really what would have to happen, right? If, if, if our gas here, right, is expanding, if this gas, you know, is expanding, it's going to naturally want to drop in pressure. So if the volume is getting bigger, you'd have to heat it and the temperature would have to be going up to keep it the same pressure. Likewise, if you're going the other way, if you're compressing a gas, you're going from here to here and you have your gas and it's being compressed. If it's being compressed, then uh, the temperature must drop to keep the same amount of pressure. So that should make sense there. So this would be called isobaric expansion. This would be isobaric contraction. Okay, so this is M6. Container is kept at a constant pressure of one atmosphere. It's condensed from 0 0.095 meters cubed to 0 0.050 meters cubed. What is the change in temperature? And so we have the initial temperature, 10 degrees here. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and pause the clip and uh, give this a try. And then when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so in this case, the ideal gas before equals ideal gas afterwards. Everything's staying the same except volume and temperature. And, you know, we uh, must have this in Kelvin. And so we place that in there. So the final temperature should be 148.947 Kelvin to keep it, uh, you know, or to see what the change in temperature would be. So therefore, the difference 134.05 Kelvin. So, um, you know, if you have a pressure buildup, and we've talked about this before, you know, temperature is increasing, temp you know, the pressure is increasing. If the volume is fixed, you can have explosions, right? So this is called isovolumetric and isochoric. It's important to know both terms, isovolumetric, isochoric, same thing, um, but uh, just different name to express the same thing, but you need to know both. And so... Um, in this case, you know, the volume is staying fixed. And so, you know, if you have a fixed volume and the pressure is dropping, right, you're going to be going from a hotter temperature to a colder te temperature. You're going to be cooling it. But if you have a gas and you have a constant constant volume here, right, volume is not changing, pressure is going up, pressure is going to go up because the temperature is going up. And so, you know, that should make sense. The adiabatic process is where all three change, pressure, volume, and temperature. So if this is an isotherm, the, you know, if, if we have an adiabatic situation, uh, you know, the temperature, pressure, and volume all change, no heat enters or leaves. And so uh, that's an important, you know, part there with that. And, uh, yeah, all three will change. Now, adiabatic uh, contraction is again where temperature, pressure, and volume all change as well. And in this case here, you can see it going off of the, you know, isotherm there. In an adiabatic process, no heat enters or leaves. And it's been shown that uh, pressure times volume to the fifth third power is constant for monatomic gases. And so, um, the pressure before should equal the pressure after in terms of that. So uh, this is something that we can evaluate uh, with an adiabatic process. And so, um, yeah, so we can see that. So this is M6A. Um, we can try this in ideal gas expands adiabatically from a state where pressure is 5 times 10 to the fifth pascals. The volume is 2.2 times 10 to the negative third meters cubed. The temperature is 485 Kelvin. Uh, to a new volume of 3.8 times 10 to the negative third meters cubed. And we want to calculate the new pressure and the new temperature of the gas. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. You can pause the clip and uh, give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right. So we have our gas before, gas afterwards. The gas is expanding. We have our values here in pressure and volume. And so we should get a, a second pressure of 2.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals.
once we have that, um, we can get the new temperature uh, before, you know, we got the situation before, situation after, and the uh, temperature afterwards should come out to be 336.77 Kelvin. Okay, so for processor where, processes where the pressure varies, we can still get that area, and sometimes we'll have to approximate. For instance, in this case here, you know, if we wanted to get the area inside here, you know, we could set up maybe a triangle, um, you know, before, you know, we really need integral calculus, right, to get the area underneath here. But, uh, you know, you can get pretty good approximate, approximations with what you need. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the situation. Let's say we have a gas. From A to B, what's happening here, right? The volume is going from volume one to volume two. So this gas is expanding, right? Um, so this gas is expanding. And from B to D, the pressure is dropping, but the volume stays fixed. And then from D to C, the volume is coming, you know, getting smaller and pressure staying the same. And then from C, uh, let's we'll say A to B, B to D, D to C, and then C to A, right? C to A, the pressure is increasing, the volume is staying fixed. And so therefore, right, if from if we just looked at from, from A to B, right, we would consider this whole thing, this whole area, as work but because there's some negative work done right so there's work done from here to here going from d to c we have to s subtract it out so the area inside is the actual work done in that cycle and so um yeah so let's take a look at this for this situation here um i want you to go ahead and graph this out just very basically you don't have to set up the perfect scales there but um, go ahead and sketch a graph with this and determine how much work is done in this cycle. So this is M7. Um, so go ahead and pause the clip and give that a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so when we sketch that out, we should get a total amount of work of 50,000 joules. That's because, you know, from A to B, we get this whole, again, this whole area. But from C to D, uh, this is negative, you know, it becomes negative work or the volume is getting smaller. So we subtract that out, and it's just the area inside here, which will be uh, 50,000 joules. So with the first law of thermodynamics, if we look at the different processes, for instance, isothermal, temperature stays the same. Therefore, if temperature stays the same, there's no internal energy change, right? In an isobaric situation, if pressure stays constant, um, you know, delta U equals Q.